I'm back here on the show. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Let's just get this raw report out of the way, everybody. My you know what this show was? I can't say the word on the air, so I'll use the word trash. It was a trash sandwich because it had a good opening segment. <laughs> it had a good last one minute, and the rest of it was a pile of trash. Is what it's actually. Sh- oh, my God. John Cena comes out. Massively over. Place goes crazy for the guy. Cuts a promo on Roman Reigns. Guy's a megastar. Promises he's going to be on SmackDown on a Friday night. He's going to take out Roman Reigns. And then out comes Riddle, and they do a bunch of bros, and they fist bump. And it was awesome. It was like, my God, look at this show. What a great show. The fans are back. We're on, we're on our way. Well, then we go to Riddle and the Viking Raiders versus Morrison, AJ, and Omos. And the match was okay. Everybody worked hard. I got nothing bad to say about the wrestlers. But the finish of the match is Eric and Ivar pin Morrison with the Viking experience. The same John Morrison that was like one of the guys on the show last night on Money in the Bank that was getting like massive reactions and people are chanting Johnny Drip Drip and they like the guy. Well, we beat him here. Why did we beat him? Because, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but they just do the same matches over and over again. And so next week, it's AJ and Omos defending against the Viking Raiders, even though they beat the Viking Raiders at Money in the Bank. So why are the Viking Raiders getting a rematch? And they could have at least pinned AJ. Oh, no, we must pin. We must pin John Morrison. We have Jackson Riker threatening to do something to, you'll never guess, everybody, Elias. Because they're doing the same matches over and over again. It ends up being Jackson Riker versus Elias in his Symphony of Destruction match. To be fair, the match was a thousand times better than anybody had any right to expect. But, like, you know how long it took me to get into this match? The match was 12 minutes and 44 seconds. I think I finally got into it 12 minutes in. Because I don't care to see the same matches over and over again! Jackson Riker won for the sixth time in their feud in the last eight weeks. Mansoor met with Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville. Mansoor and Mustafa Ali will be teaming up next week. Ali wants nothing to do with this, but he agreed to do it one time. And then Sheamus shows up, and he boots him out of the room like two geeks because they have to announce it tonight. You're never going to guess. It is Sheamus versus Humberto Carrillo for the 15th time this year. Charlotte comes out for a celebration. Guys like NXT? Well, you're in the minority. This company doesn't care one bit about NXT. Charlotte is no longer, when they when they count her reigns, NXT titles no longer count. So now she's only an 11-time champion. Now, if you think that it doesn't make any difference or whatever, that's fine. But the people that think it doesn't make any difference are the same people that are sick of Charlotte winning and losing the title. Well, now that she's only an 11-time champion, she needs to lose and win the title five more times. So you were better off when they counted those NXT titles. So Rhea Ripley comes out, and you'll never guess, they're doing Rhea Ripley and Charlotte again on the show tonight. Because all we see are the same matches over and over again. Natty and Tamina, you'll never guess, they face Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax for the 50th time. And we do a match, and Reginald interferes. We never saw that before. And Shayna gets pinned. We never saw that before. At least there's something different. They dumped Reggie. And, of course, all the fans are happy they're chanting Reggie sucks. Then Tozawa comes out. Reggie beats him for the 24-7 title. Now the fans like Reggie. And Reggie does a bunch of flips, and he does back handsprings to the back. Reginald, your new 24-7 champion. They announced Karrion Cross will debut tonight. Boy, did he ever. Sheamus, you'll never guess, Sheamus defeated Umberto Carrillo. He pins him in a non-title match, and uh, this idiot Carrillo punches him in a metal face mask. He hurts his own hand because his character's an idiot, and then Sheamus headbutts him with metal, which is legal, and he pins the guy. None of this makes any sense. I can break down more of this if you want to later. I'm just trying to get through this stupid show here. MVP comes out. You remember last week when uh, when uh, uh, Woods uh, Xavier Woods beat Bobby Lashley, and we had this big talk about what this meant. And I said, I'll bet you anything. The whole reason that Xavier Woods pinned Bobby Lashley was an angle to write off the women because they don't want to bring the women on the road. 
Well, lo and behold, guess who's not even on the show this week? Xavier Woods is nowhere to be found. There is zero follow-up, and this whole promo is about how no, there's no more women, and there's no more champagne, and now Lashley is serious. So, in fact, whereas I was wrong about this show getting better, I was 100% right. That's the whole reason they beat Bobby Lashley as a way to write women off the show, because they don't want to fly him from city to city, because a bill Billion dollar company can't afford to fly five women city to city. And then he issues an open challenge, and you'll never guess who accepts. Keith Lee. Keith Lee is back. He hasn't been on the show in seven months. They bring him back, and granted, he wasn't born here, but they say hometown, hometown hero Keith Lee is here to face Bobby Lashley. Well, hometown hero Keith Lee gets five minutes. He's beaten unmercifully. The announcers are busy talking about all of this mistakes that he's made and how he's slowed down. And they just bury this poor guy on commentary. And then Keith Lee pins him. So if you think that the return of Keith Lee is the beginning of something big for Keith Lee, eh, I got no faith anymore. I learned my lesson yesterday. And then, of course, Goldberg comes out because Keith Lee and Kofi Kingston all set up guys for Goldberg. You'll be facing Bobby Lashley at SummerSlam. Jinder Mahal comes out, and it's his birthday. Poor Shankly wants to sing happy birthday to Guy. They send out Drew McIntyre. It's like they finally figured out, boy, have we screwed up Drew McIntyre ever since the Miz beat him for the title. Ah, it's time to rehab the guy. Let's give him two chairs, and he can hit Shankly 34 freaking times. He kills this poor guy dead. I mean, he killed this guy. And then they killed us by switching the camera back and forth 55 times. I almost had a heart attack watching this show. That's the end of poor Shankly. Karrion Cross comes out. No Scarlet. He does have the NXT title. Because I gotta let you know this is a this is a joke belt. One minute and forty-two seconds. Karrion Cross loses to Jeff Hardy when Jeff Hardy cradles him and puts his feet on the ropes. Can you imagine? Well, you don't have to. You saw it. I'll talk more about this later. Fear not. Patrick says, Cross, what do you think about losing your Raw debut? Great question, Patrick. Well, Karrion Cross ain't happy about it. Nor would I be. We have a absolutely, positively horrible... I thought last week's Alexis Playground or was bad. This one was ten times worse. She's on the swing. Dewdrop and, and uh, what's her face? Eva Marie show up again. The face of Raw... I don't even remember her name. They show up again, and uh, now Alexa and Dewdrop, their buddies, even though if you were paying like a smidgen of attention, they got in a big fight last week, and Dewdrop threw Alexa over the barricade on a cement and apparently killed her because we never saw her again. Well, now they're friends. I guess Vince forgot that part. So they're doing this thing, and and uh, and Eva makes fun of the doll. Alexa, don't make fun of Lily. So Eva goes to leave, and she trips. It's the funniest most horrible trip in the history of wrestling. She literally has to pretend to trip over her own leg. Go back and watch it again. She trips over her own leg. She falls down. Oh, now I'm scared of the doll. She has to go away. They muted the crowd. They didn't even they didn't even take the chance because they know it's horrible, but they do it anyway. Because there is that part of Vince that likes torturing you and watching you take it and keep watching. Then we had the main event. Rhea Ripley and Charlotte not as good as the night before. They went, uh, whatever they went. I don't even remember. And uh, it's a DQ. Charlotte tries to leave. Rhea goes after. Charlotte hits her with the belt. DQ. That's a great payoff. And then Rhea lays her out on the outside. And, th- like, there's a timing issue. So Rhea is literally hitting her with her finish on the floor as Nikki Cross is making her way to cash in. So Nikki cashes in. She hits a high cross. It was like it's 1980. She'd say high cross, and she wins the women's title. She holds up the belt to celebrate. Oh, it's Impact Wrestling. To the back. They're off the air. Hell of a celebration she got. We'll break this down more after the break. Observer Live. I have listened to this noise like 300 times in a row, dying laughing. And I may go do that after the show is over. Because this noise that Seth Rollins played sounded exactly like the mummy's voice that they recreated on National Geographic. 
Scientists were able to mimic Nessie Amun's voice by recreating his mouth and vocal cords with a 3D printer. It allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> it allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> I don't know if I can do it one more time. <laughs> it allowed them to produce a single sound. Oh! <laughs> the top comment on YouTube, I love when she says, ah! <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.